the baseball game that turned into a ray. What do you mean coming over there revamping the graphics and stuff? Huh. Are we ready for a baseball game that turned into a riot fable? Sure. In I know how much you love sports games. Cleveland, Ohio. And as discussed before on this channel, Cleveland at this point is a hub of investment and growth. Yes, Cleveland has always has had problems. Fire regularly. Over oh. 13 times by now. Oh dear God. <laughs> I, did, I yes, knew it was bad, but I didn't know that being it was that bad. Due to deindustrialization, but don't mind any of that. Cleveland's baseball team has big plans. See, okay. beyond the horrific pollution and local economic depression, something even worse was happening. Cleveland's baseball sales were going down. That was it. Something <laughs> had to be done. <laughs> Just like the Cleveland Indians baseball organizers gather round. Gentlemen, okay. sales have been in the gutter these last few seasons. We need more people coming through those doors. So what's the plan? It's then that someone has a brilliant idea. A baseball game where alcoholic beverages are stupidly cheap. Oh no! Fable. Yeah? Are you still watching? Yeah. I just... No, Platty, just because you want to get drunk doesn't mean this is a good idea. Now, Cleveland had run a similar promotion before in 1971, and it had gone very smoothly. So naturally, this time would be buttery smooth again. <laughs> now, the average price for a beer in 1974 is- You okay, Fable? I was stretching and yawning. Oh, it sounded like you were crying well, to me. About 65 I am crying. That's equivalent to around $3.57 in 2022. Huh. It's kind of crazy. This game's beer would cost just 10 cents. That's equivalent to about 50 cents in 2022. So every single beer only costs 50 cents? Holy. Do you know how fast people can get hammered? Keep in mind that the cheapest yeah. tickets to the game were about half a dollar back then. And you've got a ticket and five beers for just one dollar. Holy! Not bad. But hold on. We can't let people go overboard. Okay. Right. How about we add a limit of six beers per purchase? Wait. So. Yeah, that's good enough. So per purchase per ticket. So they can just buy more tickets. It's it's only one dollar for everything. Oh dear God. It was genius. A baseball game where beers cost 10 cents. No more, Platty. I'm cutting off your alcohol. <laughs> what should we call it? Hold on. I think I've got it. 10 cent it's beer night. Perfect. And with that, the planning of 10 cent beer night goes underway. Okay. But before we move on, Raid, Shadow Legends. Do you okay. have a mobile phone? No. Then why aren't you already playing? And because. Just slaughtering hordes of enemies. Raid has plenty of it. I don't feel like what it. about tons of bosses and new updates every month? Raid has that too. Like collecting new champions. Mm. Look around. Champions, champions, they... champions. You know this game has for Almost some reason Randa Rousey as a playable and the game's graphics. champion. My god. But what Why no? People don't play? like Ronda Rousey well, because she's very uh, self-centered. Get together five of your boys and jump into any of the epic Basically, she thinks she's the best MMA fighter wars, ever, quite literally. Wars. Or alternatively, hit the PvP arena and dab on other players. And Raid's just got a ton of new stuff. Look, is that mm -hmm. a Champion Select event? It is. From January champion 16th elect. to February 10th, all new players can vote on their favorite starter champion and get oh. a chance to win prizes. Including legendary champions, in-game items, I have and water Amazon with me. gift cards. I actually to do not drink alcohol Just whatsoever. From the links below. But I know the effects, trust me. Due to family, I know the horrible the effects that it can have on your uh, ID drunk. And vote for your favorite champion. And over there, is that an unlockable champion based on the UFC fighter Ronda Rousey? Yeah, it is. Yes. Because she is in the game. All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and February 20th. And she's all yours. Ronda Rousey no, is available you. for new and old players. Just use the special promo code RAIDRONDA in-game. 
and for 30 days, new players can click the link in the description or scan this QR code to get unique bonuses. Waiting for you right here. Is that a free epic champion? No, but it looks kind of cool. Silver, 50 gems, two epic skill tones. My god. Raid okay. Shadow Legends. Anyway, now pick gone. up the phone and download the game. For those that don't know, the reason I let them do these ads or don't skip over them is because it's their video. I feel like I should at least do something nice for them if I'm going to Never. react to their video. Never steal their content. Be the villain. I know you can. No! I like to at least yes. try to be a nice person. How dare you, sir? How dare I try to be nice? I know, I'm just a saint. I just can't help it. <laughs> uh, I'm not. It will be nice to me. No. But you get the... You get the butterfly net. That's all you get. June the 4th, 1974, okay. Cleveland Baseball Stadium. After weeks we of comprehensive go. planning, Tencent Beer Night was ready to go. The Cleveland Indians and the Texas Rangers are in town and getting set okay. to play each other later that evening. The beer trucks are coming in and loading up. So far, right. things are looking grand. There are also record numbers of people coming in. Dear God. The average turnout for games last season had been a few thousand, but tonight, over 25,000 people had rocked up. And they're all that was over twice hammered. The they were expecting. Or they're all wow. drinking. The plan was working perfectly. But um, there is a little other thing brewing. See, uh -huh. the Texas Rangers and the Cleveland Indians actually have a little bit of history. Just a week hmm. earlier, both teams had played each other down in Texas. And all things right. got heated. The game had mostly been going smoothly. That was until both teams' benches emptied out for an all-out brawl. Ah, uh, yes. This is something that does happen in baseball every once in a while. Just a straight-out brawl in between the players. I've never seen it happen. I've only ever seen, like, cats or animals run onto a field, but it does happen. It didn't take long for fans to get involved, and Indians players are barraged by food and beer from Rangers fans on their way back to their benches. Hmm. Cleveland's pitcher has to actually be physically restrained from climbing into the stands. Dear God, man! Fans. Also, at this point, Texas is being managed by a guy called Billy Martin. About Billy hmm. Martin. He drinks. A lot. <laughs> openly boasts about cheating to the teams he's playing against. Why? And throughout his career, was hired and fired from the New York Yankees about five separate times. <laughs> One of those times, so punching a marshmallow salesman in the face. <laughs> he also fought his what? own... Specifically, the fact that it was a marshmallow salesman makes me laugh. Best player in the benches during a game, and even broke his pitcher's rib after having about four fights with him in a hotel. What the this hell? One night after almost having a fight with a groom celebrating his wedding night. <laughs> it was fair to say the man was. I, I almost left the point. The funniest part is that he kept getting hired. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> was he just that good of a coach? All right, see you later, Petra. Uh, if anyone knows any Billy Martin, I guess, lore at this point, or history, tell me. <laughs> was no stranger to a fight. And this guy was the manager of the Texas Rangers for 10 cent beer night. Okay. It also turns out Enjoy that he'd been having working. a jab at the Indians to the press. Okay. Telling a reporter there wouldn't be enough fans at Cleveland Stadium to worry about. Cleveland's sports radio host spends the entire uh, week amping up Cleveland's fans about it. Then there was the right. weekly papers cartoon of the Indians mascot, Chief Wahoo, who's holding up boxing gloves, saying, be ready for anything about their oh, next game. that's not good. Mm. And tonight was the night Cleveland and Texas would finally play again. The only difference? Ten times the fans and ten cents a beer. All that combined with the local economy of laid-off factory workers and ten cent beer. Yeah, a bunch of factor workers getting laid off. They're more than willing to get hammered in the night to forget their problems. The night's atmosphere was a bit uneasy. Yeah, but nonetheless, sorry about that, guys. the game begins and players start batting. The Rangers take the lead early on after their Tom Greaves scores a home run in the second inning. 
Okay. An inning basically being a round of play. I know. Now, unsurprisingly, the crowd at this point is already absolutely hammered. <laughs> and things are beginning to degenerate. Oh, no. Fast. After the home run, a middle-aged woman decides to run onto the field. Okay. okay. Not too crazy. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Is she flashing the crowd? Oh, God. Oh, God. She also runs up to the head umpire and tries to kiss him. <laughs> he says he's not in the kissing mood. She's eventually removed, and the game continues. <laughs> in the fourth inning, Texas's Tom Greaves hits his second home run of the game, and fans okay. celebrate. It's at this moment that a man sprints into the field and slides into second base. Oh, what the hell? He's also naked. Dear By God, the way, that would... the ground around a base is made of an almost yeah. gravel-like material. So this probably hurts. That would... A lot. Or maybe he's too drunk to notice. It could honestly be a bit of that. Security tries to catch him, but he slips away into the crowd, never to be seen again. Okay. Inning five. A man and his son run onto the field and moon the crowd. Okay. It's also around this point that a Cleveland batter hits a line drive straight Ooh. into the Texas pitcher's stomach, oh. sending him to the ground. Cleveland fans in the hurt. upper stadium begin chanting, hit him again, hit him harder. The organizers are sat Not down, good. watching this unfold live. This is going swimmingly. No. However, it's at this point that someone bursts into the room. Gentlemen, a problem. The increasingly incredibly volatile and agitated crowd? No. We can't serve these beers fast enough. Oh. See, early on, the demand for beer was so great that Cleveland staff couldn't actually haul the beers out of the trucks quick enough, resulting in very large, very angry queues. Oh. Hold on. What if we line the trucks behind the outfield fence and sell the beers straight from the back of the trucks? That sounds like a terrible idea. Genius. And beer trucks walk up to They're the fences. They're laying them literally that forward. close to a field. Now back to the game. And the atmosphere is currently changing. See, it's 1974. And for some reason, in 1974, it's fairly common practice to bring firecrackers to games. What? And 10 Cent Beer Night was no exception. I, d I don't remember this ever being a thing. But then again, I'm probably... It definitely wasn't a thing when I saw baseball, but uh, in this time, I guess it's normal. A ton of fans had bought them, and by God were they using them. And hundreds are set off in and around the stadium. This results in a ton of smoke. That, coupled with people in the crowd banging literal war drums, gives the game an atmosphere more akin to a battlefield than a baseball game. What the hell? But alas, the game goes on. And back on the field, Texas's Mike Hargrove is being pelted with hot dogs and shit. <laughs> He's also hot almost dogs. hit with a gallon jug of wine. Why? Firecrackers are now also being thrown into Texas. I, I know why they're drunk, but dear God. Who carrying around a gallon jug of wine? Warm up area, and the team members inside have to be evacuated immediately. Understandable, it's a fire hazard. Regardless of all of this, Texas is doing well, and currently 5 to 1 up. Okay. Now at this point, Monumental amounts of beer and debris are being thrown onto the field. Announcers yeah. ask fans to try and keep the field clean. They're not gonna listen. The tidal wave of beers are thrown in immediately after. <laughs> yeah. An army of stewards are instantly deployed to clean it up. Meanwhile, in the outfield, fans have now actually thrown the tables separating them and the beers away. Of and course. are currently in the process of pillaging them. The bar staff also only consists of two teenage girls per truck. Yeah, so and they're unsurprisingly, out. They're now deciding it's probably time to leave. Yeah. 10 cent beer night, just got a 10 cent discount. The hordes rampage the trucks like wolves. But back on the field, and the onslaught continues. Texas players are being battered with beers, empty cups, rocks, bottles, batteries, for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> Why batteries? <laughs> who, who just has batteries on the wall of the baseball More hot field? Dogs. One player reckons he's hit with around 20 pounds of hot dogs. That's People about the weight of a bike or a sledgehammer. God damn! Organizers are sat nervously, still watching this all unfold. Okay, here's Fans a little extra face. energy. I don't think that's why. <laughs> are now actively deconstructing the padding of the stadium wall. Oh god! They actually almost get it off and up into the seats. However, uh. the army of stewards abandon their trash job and stop them, <laughs> spending Good. the remainder of the game making sure the wall is kept intact. Yeah, the it makes more work now for also them. Bolder. Tons of them run onto the field, throw oh. their clothes off, and start running around. Oh my Packs god. Packs of fans are scurrying across the outfield more and more frequently. 
streakers are everywhere. The seventh inning Good of the God. game commences, and most families and those that had remained sober had looked around and decided it was probably time to leave. Smart! Leaving only a mass of belligerent drunks left. Not good. The ninth inning. The, the game's final, final ending. One, and Cleveland Indians had actually managed to rally back, tying the I game. I wonder why. Five. Maybe it's because the other team was getting pelted with hot dogs. <laughs> Indians player Rusty Torres hits the ball and starts running. He gets to second base. The game winning run is now in his reach. However, this is when things at 10 cent beer night hits critical mass. Oh. Critical mass. It's near the end of the final inning, and Rusty Torres is staring down the barrel of a potential win for the Cleveland Indians. Okay. However, a 19 year old in the crowd has a very different idea. He decides to make a run on field and grab Texas outfielder Jeff Burrow's cap. Burrows confronts the fan, but trips and falls. Now, from the Texas bench's perspective in the dugout, it looked like the fan had attacked Burrows. Oh. Billy Martin is livid. He's quoted as saying, Boys, let's go get him. Before grabbing a bat and literally charging the field. <laughs> All of his players behind him also wielding bats. God damn. On the field, they find Burrows unharmed, but their charge had started something ungodly. Oh, now no. gone from the fields with the goofy streakers and silly pitch invaders, and something morbid was replacing them. An army of fans had crafted knives, chains, what? clubs, and oh, other weapons God. from the stadium seats, fences, and other general infrastructure. What the and hell? And now storming the field with them. It was clear the battle royale had begun. Oh, Where no. we dropping, boys? Hordes of fans descend upon the field at breakneck speed and began looting. Biz, delicious. Bases, We're just looting taken. everything. Stadium debris, nice. While a large number of fans on the field, others stay back and continue air support by hurling bottles from the stands. And before long, there were 200 plus fans on field wielding Mad Max style DIY weaponry surrounding the, the 25 fuck? Rangers, with more fans dropping in constantly. Yeah, that's not good. The organizers are now sweating heavily. I'm... If we don't do something here, boys, things might start to get out of hand. I think it's long gone by that point. Wait, hold on. We only hired 50 of them. Oh. Yeah. God. The stadium's organist steps in. It's all right, lads. I've got this. What? And he starts playing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Back on the field, and Cleveland's manager I now realizes that, that the Texas Rangers are in serious trouble. He and his own men also grab their bats. Oh, and nice! Literally attacking their own fans in the process. Rioters I mean... begin throwing steel chairs at players, and Cleveland pitcher Tom Hilgendorf is hit in the head. Oh, the damn! The player is also hit on the head. He ends the game by forfeiting it to Texas. And runs Makes away. sense. It was clear the situation is becoming bad. So managers try to get their teams back to the benches and Good. out of the stadium. However, on his way back to the benches, Texas's Mike Hargrove gets into a fist fight with a fan. Whoa. By the way, the game's announcers are calling <laughs> all of this out in real time. Oh my god! <laughs> oh god damn. Hargrove eventually gets the fan down, but is almost immediately hit by another one. However, God the sight damn. of the players swinging bats at the rioters starts to lower the rioters' morale. Good! And they back off a bit. Seeing this, benched players form a rear guard, and players take advantage of what might be their only opportunity to get out. I will be amazed that I'm glad all the players in the game on both sides were able to work together just to get out of there. Because goddamn. <laughs> Both teams beeline to the benches and through the tunnels. They'd made it, leaving a violent mob of baseball fans alone on the field. Which, yeah, they're just gonna steal shit and steal shit and break shit. Maybe beat each other up. Uh, that's honestly probably what they're gonna do either way. But yeah, I'm just glad the players were able to get out of there. In the midst of all of this carnage, a local sports writer is out on the field, attempting to interview people. Why? He approaches multiple fans but eventually gives up after getting punched in the face twice. <laughs> Jerry, 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 what are you, 
Who's Jerry, Platty? All right, boys. Take me out to the ball game clearly isn't working. Yeah. We have essentially no security here. There's only one option left. Call the police. The is eventually quelled by Cleveland's own SWAT team. Okay, that makes sense. Jerry Springer. What? Dun, dun, dun. Fable. And so, Fable. after Fable. thousands of dollars of damage, casualties left, right, and center, yeah. and a literal yeah. battle royale. Uh -huh. You created a time paradox, Fable. Anyway, breaking out mid-game, ten cent beer night had come to an end. Of the hundreds of rioters in the field, only nine arrests were made. That's Throughout surprising. Night, Sixty thousand beers consumed, nineteen streakers. An unquantifiable amount of damage to the stadium. God and damn. by the end of it, every single base stolen. That's a they price. were never returned. <laughs> it had been nothing short of an absolute travesty. Yeah. Like, what that did you expect to happen? Would be another 10 cent beer night held a month later. Why? You can't be that stupid to try it again, can you? Oh, who am I kidding? People with too much money can be that stupid. Uh... But thank you all so much for watching. If you like what we're doing here, please consider liking, follow it, subscribing, all that nice stuff you do for us little YouTubers. And Fable, do you know what time? Oh. Give me all your money. I need it. I'm poor. Sure, do that for Fable every once in a while. I throw a snickel. <laughs> Just start throwing your money at him, quite literally. Like Make sure they're coins. Oh my god, so rude. Anyway, thank you all so